Hey guys, Auspiciousy here. And this is going to be the rules for the Scottish Players Only Celtic series. Number one, all foreign players must be sold or released. Obviously, that counts for the players that start at the club. We're getting rid of all non-Scottish players unless they have a dual nationality with Scottish nationality is one of them. Number two, players with dual nationality can be used until they receive a cap for another nation. Self-explanatory, common sense. Number three, youth caps do not count towards being eligible, only senior caps for national teams. That alludes to the second rule. Obviously, some youth players are gonna be picking up caps for different youth teams. However, if they do have Scottish nationality and they don't have a senior cap for that national team, they are eligible to play and they are considered Scottish only, even though they are a dual national. Number four, manager may not be added in order to get Scottish national team job. Obviously, I'm going to try and become the Scotland manager. And in regards to doing so, I'm not going to be able to add a manager to create a vacancy for the Scotland national team. So we need to get that by pure means. So basically, the manager needs to be sacked or retire or step down. And then we apply and become manager that way. Now, we have the goals. Goals of the series are pretty, pretty normal. Obviously, want to win the Scottish Professional Football League, the Scottish Premiership, without a shadow of a doubt. I'm assuming that that is a given for Celtic. We also need to win the Scottish Cup and the Scottish League Cup. Both of those tournaments, I think, are very achievable for, for Celtic, even under these challenge rules. The next one, however, much more difficult, and that is to win the UEFA Champions League. Obviously, the biggest, well, re realistically, the biggest prize in club competition, Champions League. You know, Celtic, they have a pretty unique history with European competition. We want to further that and not just be a group stage competitor for the duration of the series. The next three goals here on the list all pertain to the national team, the first of which getting the Scottish national team job. That is a goal in itself. It's going to be relatively difficult, at least until a few seasons into the game. The next one is to win the European Championship with the Scottish national team. And finally, the last goal. The biggest goal you could probably imagine is to win the World Cup with the Scotland national team. Obviously, we can add a few stipulations onto that after we achieve that goal, or if, if we achieve that goal. Anyways, let's get into the episode. Welcome to episode four of the Celtic Scottish Players Only series. Now, today's episode, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be versing Tottenham in the Champions League group stage, and then we've also got the Old Firm Derby in well, in the league, basically. As you can see, the league table currently sits like this. We are in first place. I will go over the recent fixtures in a second. We've only got two to go over. But as you can see, Rangers do find themselves down in third place on nine points. So we've got a bit of a gap as things stand right now. We've got four points. However, if we do lose against them today, the pressure will be on. That's for sure. Anyway, the recent fixtures. We've only played the two games, like I said. We got a 2-1 victory over Livingston. Ryan Christie getting both goals for us there. Um, also having Jason Kerr being sent off with a straight red card. Not exactly very helpful right at the end of the game. And the next game was a 3-1 home victory against Kilmarnock. Lee Griffiths with a hat-trick for himself there. Uh, starting things off with a penalty. And then we gave away a penalty for Kilmarnock's only goal of the game. Uh, so yeah, let's get straight into the lineup. Nice and early. Only going to do the two games today. Yeah, as you can see, in goal is going to go with Bain. Kerr's going to come back in to the starting lineup. He's going to be partnered by Hendry and Sutar as our centre-backs today. We've got Douglas in the left wing-back position. O'Donnell in the right wing-back position. And then our midfield trio... Stays the same. We've got Armstrong, McGregor, and Ferguson. 
And then up front, we're going to stick with our two strikers in Griffiths and Bristy. The bench today is going to be Gordon, McKenna, Forrest, Henderson, Brown, Taylor, and Johnston. I will actually go over our Champions League group. I mean, I can tell you the opponents right now. So we've got Tottenham, obviously. It's going to be a very tough game away from home in North London. But then we've also got PSG and I think Galatasaray. So, you know, relatively tough opponents. I mean, maybe Galatasaray, you could see us getting, getting a result. I mean, we can try and get something out of Tottenham here today. But they're also coming first in the APL. So they're doing really well. And, you know, our squad is made up of Scottish only players. So it's a, you know, a little bit weaker than it could have been had I not been doing the challenge. And Lucas Mora has scored an incredible goal in the first three minutes of this game. What a goal. I mean, I can't even, I can't even be upset about this one. Very special. Bang. Okay. Find ourselves 1-0 down very early on. We are just going to stick with the same tactic. I mean, going attacking against Tottenham, it's pretty brave. Probably a little bit stupid. But at the same time, I mean, this is our tactic that we're going to probably stick with throughout the series it was relatively successful in one of my other series that I did starting on the FM20 beta with AC Milan I mean Tottenham are coming forward again here through Son Ericsson getting their second goal for them this could be a bad one this could be a bad one we're 2-0 down in the first 17 minutes. And their, their better players are definitely causing us some real, real problems. There we go, Ericsson with his third goal of the season. They also have a corner here. Um, that might be a penalty, I think. The Tongan apparently was pushed in the back by the looks of it. And I mean we could be we could be 3 0 down here if this is actually a penalty. And the verdict is It's a penalty. Okay, lovely. I'm assuming that's Harry Kane to take it. Yes, it is. And he scores. Of course he does. 3-0 down. Okay. Um, yeah, not good. I didn't expect us to get a result. But I didn't expect us to play this badly either. We are getting pumped at the moment. Uh, apparently they've scored another goal, but I think it might be offside. Yeah, from Deli Alley. Ooh, just offside. Was he offside? I mean, that, that was very close. I just noticed that Sutar is on a yellow card, so... We will definitely ease him off. I mean, Tottenham's still coming forward here. Really, really not looking good. I mean, I don't even think we've had a, a highlight for ourselves. Could be about to change, though. Griffiths beats his man one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Hugo Lloris pulling off a pretty good save there. Although you could probably say that Griffiths probably should have done a little bit better. I mean, he, he actually is probably of EPL quality. Whereas some of the other members of the team, not so much. Would have been a nice, a nice goal to score. 
you know, bring it back to 3-1. Possibly, you know, I mean, you can't really say that anything was going to happen, but it would definitely be a good start. Bristy has scored a goal there. He's in pretty good form since returning from injury. And we have actually got a goal back, so, I mean, it could be 3-2 right now. If Griffiths scored that goal, it would be 3-2. Christie with a nice finish. Barry Douglas again getting himself another assist. Do we just see two replays? Hmm, interesting. All right, 3-1 at half time. I mean, it looks bad on paper. But I think we definitely sort of came back a little bit in that, uh, towards the end of the first half there. I mean, some of their defenders not playing too well either. Alderweireld, Vertonghen. And then Danny Rose has got a knock, so... So is O'Donnell, to be fair. I might actually take O'Donnell off for Forrest. Yeah, he's not playing too well. Uh, I might actually bring... Henderson on for Armstrong as well. Armstrong on a 6.3, giving away that penalty in the first half as well. Ooh, Son could be in behind. Yeah, he's stolen the ball off Kerr. And he gets his own rebound from the Bane save. And it's going to be 4-1. Pretty unlucky there. Obviously, some bad, bad defending by Kerr. I mean, he essentially had the ball, and then he, he lost it. And Son, Son Hung Min, a very, very good player indeed. And that literally just came before the sub as well. A little bit frustrating. Oh, Griffiths. He's got a goal for himself, bringing it back 4-2 now. I mean, again, if we if we didn't concede that goal to Son just, a, you know, a couple of minutes before, we would be right back in this game. And I think the, de the defense is really letting us down today. There we go, 4-2. I mean, yeah, look at our defenders, 6.4, 6.4, 6.3. From our three center backs. I mean, you can kind of expect it due to how good Tottenham's attacking force is. I mean, we're coming forward again, though. Henderson with a terrible, terrible ball, giving it away. And now Tottenham are coming forward with pace again. Lucas Mora beats his man. Ooh, Son at the back post probably should have scored that goal. Completely unmarked. Got the ball now. We try the long ball over the top again. But it's picked out, and now Tottenham are in behind. And that's a, a really good save there by Bain. Keeping Lucas Moura out again. And another good save off the, the headed corner. It's going to demand more from the boys again. See if that actually does anything. I mean, it, it changed their body language, language slightly. I mean, if somehow if we can pull another goal back, that'd be that'd be really nice. Even even though we're probably going to lose, we've got Douglas with a, a very very weak shot there. And I have to think that's probably the end of the game. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be a four-two loss against Tottenham. I mean, you have to kind of expect that type of result, especially away from home. I feel like. We started so badly, but we definitely came back into the game. And it's just a, I guess a little bit, 
a little bit disappointing, just a little bit, only because we did start so badly, and who knows what might have happened had we played to our ability from the start. Anyway, I'm going to skip forward the five days, and I'll join you for the old firm derby against Rangers. All right, so we've only got the one change since the last game, and that is O'Donnell's gone to the bench. As you can see, he's lacking a bit of match fitness. Not match fitness, but match condition. I probably could play him, and that might be the smarter option. But we're going we're gonna to give James Forrest a game. But, you know, he hasn't played too badly, but this is obviously going to be a chance for him to prove himself. Uh, obviously, some of the some of the ratings have taken a, a bit of a hit due to the Tottenham loss just before. But yeah, we're going to stick with pretty much the same starting lineup apart from that Forest change. Let's get into it. Massive game. Like I said, if if we lose this one, you know it could be it could spell something pretty bad. Bad for me. And then obviously bad in regards to the to the league table. Anyway, I'm going to expect the win. It's pretty bold for me to do that. But I think that's definitely the, the smarter choice to make in regards to any of the other sort of team talks that we could have given. Bit of a, bit of a slow start to the game. Haven't even had a highlight yet. We're 30 minutes in. I mean, the real question is, are we even going to get a highlight in this first half? It's not looking very likely. Wow. <laughs> Literally no highlights for the entire first half. I mean, apparently we've had four shots on target, so... That in itself is pretty interesting. And we get a highlight in the second half. 30 seconds in. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's going to be for Rangers. Oyo's in behind. But that's a pretty bad shot there by him. Armstrong again. Not playing too well. Douglas on a 6.4 as well. Interesting the, the differences in ratings there. And Kent, with a golden opportunity for Rangers. Really good save by Bain, apparently. Kent, Ryan Kent getting the opening goal there for Rangers. And I have to say, that's pretty disappointing. That is pretty disappointing. I think that's their second shot on target. And I mean, it was a bit of a nothing goal as well. Cleared corner, one pass back, and then a decent shot. And we find ourselves 1-0 down. Going to demand more. Um, we're also going to make a change here. We'll go Henderson on for Armstrong. And then I guess Taylor on for Douglas. Take off our two worst performing players on the pitch. Like I said, a loss here is going to be really detrimental. But we get an equaliser. Ryan Christie is popping up with the goals. He really is popping up. Sort of didn't really expect it. Obviously, Griffiths is the main goal scorer. But Christie's pulling his weight up front alongside him. So there we go. We've got the equaliser. And apparently, James Forrest has picked up an injury. So that's perfect. Luckily, we saved that last sub, so O'Donnell's going to come in. I'm just going to push him forward. At this point, we may as well just go for it in the last few minutes. I mean, it could come back and bite us in the butt, but... I mean, it looks like it's going to... Yeah, it's finishing a one all draw in the Old Firm derby. Not exactly the most exciting game by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, we literally didn't even have a highlight in that first half, so... Going to be a relatively short episode, I guess. I'm going to say that I'm far from pleased because I know it's such a a high in, you know intensity game, full of passion and stuff like that. But 
I mean, honestly, we just didn't really seem like ourselves. Bit of a bit of a wasted game, to be honest. Anyway, that is going to wrap the episode up, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you could smash a like, it'd be much appreciated. The next episode, we're going to do another double header. We're going to do PSG at home. Famous European night for Celtic yet again. And then we're also going to do St. Johnston in the Scottish League. So yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, take it easy and goodbye.